Shalom, Shalom to the hopeful elect of Israel. Let's begin this uh, lesson by giving honor and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, who made it possible for us to have this breath in us today, who watch over us throughout the night, who put the food on our table, the clothes on our back, the shoes on our feet. As we speak, there are people out there today, family, they don't have roof over their head, they don't have a place to call their own, they don't know how their next meal, or they don't know where it's going to come from. That is why day in and day out we show honor, we show gratitude to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh. But we have to talk about his son, his only begotten son. Without him, we had no access to the father. We remember the sacrifices that he made for the children of Israel. He came in the flesh. He had to endure everything that we are going through right now. You know that that body, and eh, that's why we are waiting to be changed. This body here is death. And we are waiting for him to change our body because right now he is sitting on the right hand of his father in that glorious body. But the king came here, he taught us, he fed us, he raised the dead. Yes, he healed the sick. Hmm? Came in the spirit of meekness, loneliness, to do his father's will. And look at what he has done for us to bring us back to the Lord, Yahweh. Because the, the law, statutes, and commandments were given to the children of Israel. And that statutes and commandments came with conditions that if you do this, you're going to be blessed above, the, all, above all the nations. And you can read that in the account of, you can read it, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to 14. It tells you all the curses also that comes with the, for disobeying the Lord. And guess which one we picked? That's right. We did everything that the Lord asks us not to do. Worshipping idols is very big among the children of Israel. Hmm? And that's why we find ourselves in the state that we are in. Yes, the Lord created slavery. Yes, the Lord is the one that put you in this hard captivity. Because why? You disobeyed him. That's simple. All the captivity, starting from Assyria to Babylon to the Medes to, uh, to, uh, to the Greek and the last leg of the Roman Empire, Rome, and then here, here we are. Because remember some of the letters Apostle Paul wrote to the Israelites, where were they? They were in Rome. That's right. Those were Israelites. This whole thing is a family affair. And we continue to mention that in the lessons. The salvation, again, salvation is not for the nation. They're going to enjoy it because why? They're going to have the righteous rulership in charge now. Yahweh Shai. Eh? And his men are going to be ruling this coming kingdom. So let's give honor to the king, the king of Israel, Yahweh Shai. Or praises, honor, glory to the king of Israel. Eh? The one the world ignorantly called Jesus. His name is Yahweh Shai. Simply means what? He is the deliverer. Or he is the savior. Or he is salvation. He is the root and offspring of King David, the bright and morning star, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the beginning and the ending, the alpha and the omega, the king of Israel. The same one eh, that our power, Yahweh, eh, sent to deliver the children of Israel from ancient Egypt, eh? that hard bondage because we had, we, we had favor until Joseph passed. When Joseph passed, the new king that came into power put us into hard what? Captivity. And we cry unto the Lord and then he sent Moses, Aaron, and also the angel, that mighty angel that followed us in the cloud was Yahweh Shai. That's right. That's his name is deliverance and that's what he does. And this is his gospel, the gospel of Yahweh Shai. If you can receive it, it wasn't meant for you. Again, only the elect will receive this message. This message is not for everybody. Again, let's give honor and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh. 
Bahashem Yahawashai Bahashem Kodash. We're gonna address this comment. This is a comment that came um, I believe this lesson was sometime last week. And uh, oh, it's a long comment. This gentleman had questions, okay? But most of these questions I've addressed it in many, many lessons. Okay, but we're going to go through it regardless. And uh, Lord willing, Lord willing, Lord willing, you know, because we are coming in the spirit of the Lord, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And at the end of the day, Lord willing, I hope you edify and I hope uh, I answer some of his questions. I'm going to do my possibly best through the spirit of our power, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukakodash. And I ask the angels to lead me through it and give me the precept, the appropriate precept at the right time to edify the flock and also give this gentleman a little bit of understanding. He came across, I think, you know what, in the spirit of meekness, you know, he's called himself an Edomite, Caucasian, and uh, regardless, we're going to uh, address it because at the end of the day, the Lord didn't say just prophesy to the children of Israel. We have to prophesy eh, to all the nations. Jeremiah 28 verse 8, right? You got to tell them what is coming for the, the rest of the nation. Because slavery is coming. Slavery is coming for the rest of the nation. And the children of Israel are going to enjoy their kingdom. That's why the 12th tribe. And again, this thing here is not about color. But we know that everybody want to make it about color. No. Some of our people, the Israelites, eh, are going to look like the other nations. And we're going to bring it up. You know, we're going to bring it up. But before we bring out the first precept, we're going to go to... We, let's give a double honors to our head apostles from the great millstone that taught us this truth. Without them, family, we would not have proper understanding of the scriptures because at one point, we all grew up in the plantation Christianity. Eh? That, was, uh, that was created by Esau, Edom, the self-proclaimed white man. Mm? That's right. The fact that one of the ship. That, that carries to the uh, to the new land, uh, you will call it uh, North America, you know, slave trade. One of the ships was called what? Uh, what is it called? Uh, it was just on my mind two seconds ago, you know. Uh, the ship was called something Jesus. I can't remember now. But I'll put it in the comment. Uh, the, the comment. If it comes back to me, I will, I'll bring it up. Yeah, plantation Christianity wasn't for us. The fact that even in the, during the slave during slavery, even the Bible they removed certain books from it. We had a special Bible called the Slave Bible. Yes, family, go and look it up. All these informations are out there. So you telling me the same person that trying to hide your identity, hmm? the trying to hide your identity has uh, has uh, created a system and has created a so called. Uh, uh, a religious institution where he takes you there and then he educates you eh? and then he, he ordained you to become a pastor and eh? he gave you a certificate yes the same person that tried to hide your identity the one that the lord mentioned in the book of psalm 83 he lists all your enemies for you and the same one now is creating institution for you to educate you man we just thank the lord that he took some of us the hopefully let out of those institutions and have blessed us with this song that we are singing in these last days and we don't take it for granted day in and day out we pinch ourselves we said man the lord indeed had shown us amazing mercy that's right you know amazing grace <clears throat> we thank the lord for it because we were dead as people but here we are waiting for the king of kings the Lord of Lords, as the prophecies are jumping off the pages, we can keep we can keep track of all the signs that the Lord is bringing, all the things that are happening around the world. Look at the recent one being what Maui. This is the Lord's judgment, eh? But the but the average person can see it. He says, "I formed the light and create darkness. I made peace and create evil." Hear that? He says, "I formed the light and create darkness." I made peace and create evil. I alone, the Lord, do all these things. If, if that doesn't put fear in you, I don't know what else is going to put fear in you after seeing people literally jumping into the ocean. Eh? But anyhow, let's get into it. Again, this is a comment that I received a few days back. 
and uh, you know the spirit moved me today to uh, to answer some of this gentleman's question you know and the ones that I I going to try I'm going to try to cover it all you know we have the precept to get to go into into uh, addressing his questions and lord willing you are edified but first let's go to the book of Jeremiah Jeremiah chapter 12 verse 9 it says, my heritage is unto me as speckled bird. Eh? My heritage. Let's look up the word heritage quickly. Mm -hmm. The Lord's heritage is what? It says here, the Hebrew word is what? Strong's H 5159. Nachala. 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 Which is what? Possession, property, inheritance, heritage property portion share inheritance portion because we know let's look up the root word it says here yeah to get as a possession acquire inherit possess to take possession inherit to have or get as a possession or property to divide the land for possession long story short is the lord's portion is what the children of israel he also said that in the book of ecclesiasticus Ecclesiasticus chapter 17, verse 17. It says, Israel is the Lord's portion. So now you know who. It says here, the speckled bird. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. Now we know what heritage means. Let's go to the speckled bird. The word speckled bird is what? In the Hebrew word is what? Strong's age, 6641. Savua. 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 Colored very variegated speckled and eh? let's just look up the root word here and dye and eh? like if you take cloth and then you can make a dye you could tie and dye right it becomes different colors right so this is the word the lord is saying that my heritage is unto me as what well. speckled bird right so we are going to look like what some of these nations out there right like i always say this this gentleman mentioned that I, I'm saying that only so-called black people are going to make it. I've never said that. I've never said that. Throughout my, name, my many, many lessons, I've said that we are going to look like some of these nations. Like here, it says, dye, dye stuff, something dyed, colored cloth, right? That means what? Different colors, right? So here, because why? The book again says, Let's read it. Let's go back here. Let's go back here. Family, it says here, let's go to, um, let's go back to the verse. Again, it says here, my heritage is unto me as a speckled bird, right? The birds round about, her, about uh, against her, meaning the rest of what? The birds, the rest of what? The nations. The Lord is comparing you to what? Birds, right? Come ye, assembly, all the beasts of the field, come to devour. This is how we feel among the nations. So the Israelites are going to be among the nations. I want to go quickly to the book of Numbers. Let me bring that just to make a quick point here. Numbers 24. Numbers 24. Verse, let's go to verse, uh, is it seven? It's verse 7. It says here, He who is he? Israel. He shall pour the he shall pour the water out of his bucket. Eh? That's his seed. Eh? And his seed, it says here, listen to this. He shall pour the water out of his bucket. Mm -hmm. eh? And his seed shall be in many waters. Waters represent the rest of the nation. Meaning, meaning Israel's seed is going to be among many nations. Wherever Jake, when I say the word Jake, is a short word for what? For Jacob, the children of Israel. Okay? Wherever we go, we drop our seed. Eh? We've, been, we've been fighting Esau's war for many years. Eh? Possibly that we have children in Iraq. They're going to look like the Ishmaelites. Yes? We go to Vietnam, guess what? We find a couple of women that we like, guess what? We're going to sleep with them, guess what? The children that come forth is going to look like some of these nations. That's what the Lord is saying, so what? He says here, let me repeat that again. He shall pour the water hmm, out of his bucket. And his seed shall be in many waters. 
and his king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. That's speaking about Israel. So we are spread among all the nations. I want to bring quick and uh, this image here. I always use this as an example. So uh, let's go to um, this is you for those who don't know Blake Griffin. He's a basketball player. Okay, Blake Griffin mother is so called white. Eh? You can address it. He's so called white woman. Eh? His father. His father is Haitian, eh? a tribe of Levi. Okay, let's bring that out. That's his father. That is his mother. Now, let's go back here again. So now, Blake Griffin is married to who? Married to an Edomite. We're saying, we're just saying. Could be a Jake, I'm not sure. But again, he says, The Spirit bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Musa, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shai. That... Right? That's right. So this child here, this sorry, this woman here, eh, his wife, is you. If you look at the face, you think, yeah, it's a typical Edomite, right? Look at the son now. Look at Blake Griffin's son, right? Somebody is going to look at this this boy here, and they're going to automatically assume that what this this child is what is white, so called white, because those are also social construct, and we're going to bring it. We're going to bring it. You see. So you look at this boy here, automatically, he's, he's an Edomite. But no, that's why we continue to remind the audience and tell people, no, at the end of the day, if your seed, your spirit go back, your seed, your, sorry, your seed go back to Esau, Edom, the only nation the Lord is not going to have mercy upon. And they are the nation that are going to be ruling before the Lord comes. They are the nation that were ruling the Roman Empire. Esau's kingdom started with Alexander, under Alexander the Great. That's right. It's the Lord that established him. Because the Lord says, what? I rule in the kingdom of men. Daniel chapter 4, verse 17. He's the one that established their kingdom. Because there were only two people that were supposed to rule in this movie. Esau and Jacob. Esau is the end of the world pursuing to the book of 2nd Ezra. Listen to this. Pursuing to the book of 2nd Ezra. You might as well write it down and go check it out. 2nd Ezra chapter 6 verse 9. Esau is the end of the world. So if Esau is the end of the world and Yahweh is coming, who is Yahweh coming to visit? Who is Yahweh coming to remove from the throne? It's not going to be the so-called Moabites. It's not going to be the Chinese. No. It's not going to be the, the Timonite who are those who are modern day East Indian. They're not going to be the Ammonite, the modern day uh, Japanese. No. It's Esau Edom, the self proclaimed white man. He's the one that's going to be ruling in this, in this kingdom when Yahweh Shai comes. Esau's judgment is written throughout the book. Again, Ecclesiastes. Hmm? Chapter 4 verse 16 tells us what? There is no end of the people. If anybody is telling you that, oh, the people of Esau, Edom is done away with farming, the book, tells, the book says other, otherwise. They're going to be in rulership. When Yahweh Shai shows up, it's going to be in the middle of Third World War. That's right. Who's going to be fighting the Third World War? Michael. And the angels, they're going to fight who? The dragon. The dragon goes back to what? The Roman Empire. We are living in Rome 2.0. It's simple. We see it. All you have to do is look at the infrastructures in America. Look at the Senate House. Look at the two-party system. Look at their infrastructure. Look at the stadium. It's just like Rome. The Lord said there's nothing new under the sun. If you can't see, the Lord blinded you. So yes, again, we are going to look like some of these nations. It has, it has nothing to do with color. No. It's the spirit. But, my, but let, let's go back. Let's go back. Beginning, family, everybody had a melanin. They had, had melanin. They had, yes. It was all dark, dark skinned people. Hmm? Big example when Moses, when the Lord asked Moses to put his hand in his bosom, when Moses' hand came out, what did it look like? Pale. That's right. It was pale. It was white, like leprosy. 
The same thing, Miriam. When Miriam was shooting his, her mouth and cursing, uh, what is it called, Moses, the servant of the Lord, what did the Lord do to Miriam? He cursed Miriam. Miriam couldn't stay with the congregation for at least seven days until that thing is, uh, until, until uh, 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 I think before the Lord showed her mercy. And Miriam got back her skin color. That's right. Esau is the progenitor of the self-proclaimed white man. And we're going to get there. We're going to get there. But anyhow, let's get into it. So here, hello, brother. This is what the gentleman started the, uh, the comment with. Let's go back. Mm -hmm. It says here, hello, brother. I had a couple of questions about this sermon you gave. And I want to ask them with gentleness and meekness and love. It sounded like you are saying that none of the elect of Yahweh. It's not Yahweh. Again, we never we don't use that name. Yahweh is not the, the Yahweh's name. His name is Yahweh. He is. Yah means he. Eh? Wahawa. Sorry. Yahawa. Hawa means what? He is. Okay, Yahweh. Yah means he, uh, and then uh, Hawa means what? He has exist. Yahweh. It's that simple. He is. He exists. It's not Yahweh. Actually, we have to. I probably have to do another lesson on the the Lord's name and His Son, our King Yahweh Shad. It sounded like you are saying that none of the elect of Yah Yahweh, but it's Yahweh who are saved by the blood and crucifixion of Yeshua, again, his name is not Yeshua, it's Yahweh Shai, are Caucasian. You hear that? Let me repeat that. I'm going to, you know what, how about this? Let me read it verbatim, okay? Let me, I'm, going to, I'm going to read it verbatim. But we know that the king's name is Yahweh Shai and his father, our power, Yahweh, right? The king's name is Yahweh Shai. Eh? He is the deliverer. And his father's name, our power, Yahweh, hey? our power, the power that our forefathers call upon, his name is Yahweh. So I'm going to read this verbatim, okay? So he says here, let me start from the top now. Hello, brother. I had a couple of questions about this sermon you gave, and I want to ask them with gentleness and meekness and love. It sounded like you are saying that none of the elect of Yahweh who are saved by the blood and crucifixion of Yahweh, Yeshua are Caucasian. Is that the case? First and foremost, I want to bring out a quick precept. Okay. Let's go... When it comes to the elect, let's open it up with, let's go to Isaiah first, Isaiah 45, Isaiah 45, verse 4, okay? For Jacob, my servant's sake, you hear that? And Israel, mine elect. So in order to be an elect, you have to be from the tribe of Israel. The 12th tribe. You hear that? You have to be part of the 12th tribe. That's the elect. Let's, let's read them. For Jacob my servant's sake and Israel mine elect. I have been, I have, I have even called thee by thy name. I have said name thee, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord, Yahweh, and there is none else. There is no power beside me. I gather thee, though thou hast not known me. At the end of the day, the point is, the elect are Israelite. I want to bring another precept here quickly. Let's go to, let's open up another window here, 1611. Let's go to the Apocrypha, also part of the Bible. Don't let nobody fool you and tell you that Apocrypha is not part of the Bible. The reason why they remove it from the Bible is Apocrypha name names. Okay? A name 
names. Let's go to uh, where is it? Oh, come on, what happened here? Oh, yes, here, let's go to Apocrypha and we're gonna go to Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach. Okay, but you know, what am I doing here? Let's go to Sirach Ecclesiasticus. That's another name for Ecclesiasticus. Then we have Ecclesiastes and we have Ecclesiasticus. Okay, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiasticus 1717. Okay, just to prove, to make another point and we're going to move on. Because this guy, this uh, comment is very long. And I have a few precepts that I want to go through. Lord willing, Yahweh willing. It says here, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiasticus 1717. Okay, going to take our time. It says here, for in the division of the nations of the whole earth, you hear that? The whole earth, he set a ruler over every people, but Israel, you hear that? Remember, his heritage is unto him like what? Speckled bird. He only chose one nation and the blessings went from Abraham unto Isaac, from Isaac unto Jacob and Jacob's 12 tribe. No other nation is going to receive a new body, eh? We have the pre, we have the receipt. He says here, but Israel is the Lord's portion. If somebody, if Israel is the Lord's portion, this is the Lord's movie. That's why it says in the book of uh, Romans chapter, is it Romans nine? It says the children not yet been born. Esau, Edom, it's not like he did anything, eh? For the Lord to hate him. The Lord created him so he can hate him. That's how, that's what the Lord did. Hey, he says, I'll bring that too. He says, for in the division of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people. But Israel is the Lord's portion. Whom being his firstborn, he, nour he nourisheth with discipline and given him the light of his love does not forsake him. Therefore, all their works are as the sun before him, and his eyes are continually upon their ways. That is why the moment we go off, the Lord punished us. That's right. We are the only nation that have wrought his judgment. He told you in the book of Psalm, eh? The only nation, Psalm 147, in case, you know what? I wasn't going to go there, but the Lord, the, the angel says, go there. So let's do it. Psalm 147. No other nation has wrought the Lord's judgment, okay? It's only Israel. They are the only one the Lord cares about. The Lord doesn't care about anybody, okay? The rest of the nation, they're just going to be slaves, or the slaves in the kingdom. But after they, are, after they serve their time, the Lord is going to allow them eh, to what? To rule themselves. But they're going to be tributaries to us. That's right. But it's going to be a thousand years of slavery. That's what is coming. That is what is coming. It says here, Psalm 140. Psalm 147. Is it Psalm 140? No, I think it's Psalm 149. Is it 149? No. No, Psalm 140, 149. I tell 147, right? Let's go to 4, 147. Psalm 147. The last two. It says here. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgment unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. You hear that? The Lord didn't give his statutes, his judgment. He hasn't judged the nations yet. Only the children of Israel. That's right. When you were packed like sardines eh, on those slave ships, that's judgment from the Lord. The Lord gave you into the hands of your nation. Because why? You love worshiping idols. That's one of the things that the Lord hates. But guess what? We, were, we did it anyways. That's why the Lord calls us what? Stiff-necked people. Hmm? So whenever we go off, boom, you are off to a, another captivity. That's right. Those transatlantic slave trade, those hanging and those beating, raping. Yes, the Lord brought all this punishment upon the children of Israel. We are the only nation that have wrought his judgment. That's right. 
So the Lord's portion, the elect are Israelites. That's right. We're going to, he says, he have not dealt so with any nation and as for his judgment, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Again, listen to this. Psalm 147, verse 19, write this down. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgment unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgment, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. You hear that? Now, the elect, hmm? the elect were picked before the foundation of the earth. The Lord, actually, you know what? I want to bring another precept quickly. Just to show that the Lord's portion is Israel. The Lord's statutes and commandments that the Lord gave us is to what? To separate us from the rest of the nation. Never to mingle with them. But we know that we don't listen. At the end of the day, we don't listen. We are stiff-necked people. Baruch told us. Baruch reminded us about it. Eh? Baruch 2.30. It says here, um, what did I say? I think Deuteronomy 7.6, right? Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Because I just told you that he showed his statutes and commandment to Israel, right? Let's pick it up from here. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou, listen to this, for thou art holy people unto the Lord, Yahweh, thy power. The Lord, Yahweh, thy power, have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. That's right. A special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. You hear that? Above all people, all the nations, eh? the Lord gave you statutes and commandments to keep you holy. He didn't do that with any other nation. Family, I think I've proven my point there. Hmm? Now, the elect. Eh? I want to just bring three precepts and we're gonna we, and then we're gonna move on. I want to try and address most of his questions as possible let me go back to the blue letter word let's go to the book of uh, quick navigate let's go to the first peter first let's go to first peter we gotta go back because the lord comes in the volume of the book new testament old testament uh apocrypha it's all about the lord okay he comes in the volume of the book and we believe everything is in the book first peter i think is it first peter one let's go first peter one Verse 2. Peter, an apostle of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, to the strangers scattered through the strangers are what? Israelites. Like right now, the Israelites are what? Strangers among these nations. They've been spread. We have Israelites in Japan. We have Israelites in Vietnam. We have Israelites in Germany. We have Israelites in Italy. We have Israelites all over the world. Israelite in the continent of Africa. We have Israelite in Russia. We have Israelite in Ukraine. We have Israelite everywhere. Okay? So here, Peter, an apostle of Yahweh HaMashiach, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Elect according to the foreknowledge. Let's look up that foreknowledge. Let's look up the word foreknowledge. Hmm? Let's look it up. To the foreknowledge. Let's look it up. In the Greek word, it's called what? Prognosis, right? It says here, it's a feminine word. But what is, what is that? Foretold. Pre-arrangement. You hear that? Pre-arrangement. Is that the root word for it? Let's look up the root word. To have knowledge beforehand. Are you listening to this? So the elect, you cannot make yourself an elect. Uh-uh. No amount of going to church, waking up every day, going to church and getting baptized and calling the name. No. You have to be predestined. Eh? You have to be picked before the foundation of this earth. Let's read on. It says to have knowledge beforehand. To foreknow of those whom the Most High elected to salvation. To predestinate. You hear that? To be predestinate. But the elect in these last days, they're going to be doing what pleases the Lord. They're going to know the name of the Lord, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. 
One thing about the elect, nobody is going, you can't do, he said, there's no, he said, who can bring any charge against the most high elect? It's the Lord that justifies. The elect, they did it. It's not like they got up and said, I'm going to do 10 lessons a day. I'm going to feed. No, 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 no. It's the Lord's pleasure. That's why we are extremely blessed that he has put this word in our mouth to be teaching in this last days. And we have hope. We, the faith that he has given, and then we realize that faith is also what? A gift. Pursuing to what? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. You hear that? This is the Lord's movie. This is his theater. It's not anything that we have decided. It's, all, it's not anything that we did for the Lord to choose us, to choose the, the nation of Israel. He could have chosen the Moabite, the so-called Chinese. He could have chosen the Ammonite. Hey? He could have chosen any other nation. But this is the Lord's movie. We have no power as to what the Lord does. We are all, technically, we are just robots. That's right. We are robots. Because if you go back and you read a book of, uh, what is it called? Uh, Romans chapter 9, and then you said, man, Esau didn't do anything. We will bring it out. It came to me again for the second time. So the Lord says, go there. I'm going to bring it out. It says, to have knowledge beforehand, eh? to know, to foreknow of those whom the Most High elected, to salvation, to predestinate. The elect were predestinate. Eh? The first spirit created by Yahweh Shai. Eh? The fallen ones, that's right. It wasn't some giants, some Nephthalene and angels. Uh, they were upset with the Lord. There was, there was war in heaven and all that. No, 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 no. Family, those are all fable. Everybody is in order. The angels are in order. Satan, the son of the Most High, Yahweh, is in order. Go there. Go and read in the book of, uh, what is it called? Job chapter 2. It tells you. But anyway, I don't want to veer off too much. Let's stay with this. Let's stay with this. So predestinate, meaning they were picked before the foundation of the earth. Hey? It says here, for thought pre-arrangement. Okay, let's continue to read. Let's go back here. Uh, let's go back to again. First Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Elect according to the foreknowledge of the Most High Yahweh, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. You hear that? They were predestined. Eh? For salvation, I want to go to the book of Ephesians. Let's bring it out quickly. Just three precepts just to make the point. Because we have this guy here. This is a long comment. I've never come across a comment like this. You know, it's been on my mind for, for a few days now. And I said, this is finally, the Lord said, the Spirit said, get this thing done today. So we're going to try our best and answer this gentleman's question. Again, you know, at the end of the day, is the Spirit bear witness with our spirit. Right? That we are. So, it's not about the spirit. It's the spirit, you know. It's the spirit. So, you know, you could have your typical so-called Jake looking like your typical Chinese, you know. So, let's go to the Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. It says here. Let's pick it up for verse 3. Blessed be the power. And the Father of our Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in the anointed HaMashiach, according as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Maybe somebody missed that. You see the elect, Yahweh Shai, when he created all the spirits, he chose particular spirit eh, to rule with him. For that first thousand years, which is coming. They were picked. Those spirit. Let me repeat. Let, let me repeat this. Ephesians 1:4. According as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, before this world was created. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Let's look up the word foundation. Mm -hmm. I Me, mean, it's nice to look up this word foundation in the greek sorry greek word is what katabole 
Strong's G, 2602, Katabale, Katabale. A throwing or laying down, the injection or disposition of the viral semen in the womb, of the seed of plants and animals, a founding, laying down a foundation. But there's another word that I want to look up. Let's go back to here. Before. It says before the front. Let's look at the word before. Pro. Before. Actually, that's it. That was the root word. Does it have a root word? It doesn't have a root word. Okay. Let's continue. So, family, Romans, we're going to go to Romans chapter 8. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to continue to read the comment. Just bring quick precept because the guy wants me to prove to him and through the precept. So, that's what we are doing, family. We have receipt. We have receipt. You know, we thank the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, All glory, family, all glory goes to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, And all glory because he's the one sending the spirit to allow us to do what we are doing. All glory go to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shai, Bahashem, Ephesians, no, Romans chapter 8. I'm going to go straight to the point 28. It says here, let's read a bit here. It says here, Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Most High, to them who are the called according to his purpose, the caller who the elect. Remember, the elect family, there's nothing anybody can do. Eh? The elect are the elect. You can't make yourself an elect, but we give diligence to make our election, elect, to say, we say give diligence to make your election sure. That's right. That's why we are teaching. The elect would be doing things that pleases the Lord. Because when the Lord says, go and feed my sheep, guess what, what the elect will be doing? The elect will be feeding the sheep. The elect will be minding their steps. And the elect will be keeping the, the commandments to the best of their ability. And to show their faith to the Lord, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And they are using their grace period to please the Lord. They're not going to be out there and living wickedly, and stealing, committing all kinds, all kinds of wicked acts. No. The elect are going to do whatever pleases the Lord. The hopeful elect, I said. We said hopefully, the hopeful elect to show humility. And we know that the Lord loves me, humility. Eh? Spirit of meekness. And that's the spirit that we come to you day in and day out. It says here, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Most High, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow. You hear that? For whom he did foreknow, also did predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. Because remember what Yahweh Shai says in the book of Philippians chapter 3, verse 21. In case someone didn't miss it, miss it, and I have to bring it. Hey, I have to bring it. Let's go to the book. Let's go. Let me open up another window here. Let's go to the book of uh, Philippians. Where is Philippians here? Did I miss it? Where is Philippians? Oh, right here. Philippians 3. Let's go straight to the point. Verse 19. It says here, For our convers... No. It says, For our conversation. Eh? That's what we're doing right now. It's in heaven. From whence also we look for what? The Savior. Who's the Savior? The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. The beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. Eh? The Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. You see that? It says here, here's the point, verse 21, Philippians 3, 21. Who shall change our vile body? You hear that? Our vile body is going to be changed by the king of kings. Eh? That it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Now let's go back. This is what the Lord is about to do. Let's go back to... The original window. Where is it? Romans chapter 8. Where was I? Verse 27. Verse 20, sorry. Verse 24. What was I? Uh, is it Romans? Yeah, sorry. Romans 8. Romans 8, 28. It says here. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Most High, to them who are the call according to his purpose. 
For whom he did for know, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. I just read it to you in the book of what? Philippians chapter 3 verse 20. That he's going to change our vile body. This body here is going to be changed to his glorious body. Eh? The image of his son. Eh? Because when image is done, you go back into that word image is what? Your characteristics. Yeah, characteristics. Actually, what am I doing? Let's get, let's look up that word image. Hmm? It's not just, no, there's more to it, you know. Let's look up the word image. The word image goes into what? An image, a figure, likeness. An image of things, the heavenly things, use of the moral likeness of renew men to the most high. Because the Lord says in the book of what? Psalm 82, that what? Ye are gods, right? We were, at one point, we were gods. And then when we fell, but then the Christian, they will look at the Bible, the Nephthalim and the giant. No, the giant were the children of the Most High, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, that lost their first estate, mentioned in the book of Jude. Hey, eh? That's right. We are going back to that original state. The giant of this planet. That's right. That's what is coming back. Family, that's what the Lord says. He said, eyes have not seen or ears have not heard what the Lord has prepared for those that love him. That's, this is the time that we are about to enter into. We are going back to our original estate. Let's continue. It says here, an image of the things, the heavenly things, use of the moral likeness of renewed men to the most high. Renewed men to the most high. You hear that? The image of the son of our power into which true Christians are transformed its likeness not only to the heavenly body but also to the most holy and blessed state of mind which Yahweh Shai, which the anointed possesses. That's right, Yahweh Shai's body. The what he has in that body, he's going to what give it to us. That's right, that's what is coming. That's what is coming. So that's the word, that's where the word image. Eh? There's more to the word image, you see. But anyhow, let's continue. It says here, For whom he did for know, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be firstborn among many brethren. You hear that? Many brethren. You hear that? Firstborn among what? Many brethren. So you, your, your mother, your father could come through your loins because you are the first spirit. So your mother right now, your father right now, no, they are not your original, original parents. No. You were spirit before you came down here. An angelic body, that's right. That's when we feel when we came down through Adam, that's right. When Adam, when Eve went off, that's when we fell. You see? There's no this mystical person out there floating and they're going to come back. They disobey the Lord and the Lord kick Satan out of heaven. And no, Satan is right in heaven, in the, on the left-hand side of the Lord. He's one of the sons of the Most High. That's right. Everything is in order. This is not Esau's rulership. No. Esau's rulership, everything is upside down. But Yahweh, the sovereign power, omnipotent, you kidding me? Who's gonna disobey? Who's gonna disobey him? No, everything is in order. Okay, let's continue to read. It's a more over whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Is the Lord that justify us again? Let's hear. Let's read this one here, verse thirty-three. I love this one here. Eh? It says here, verse 33 says, Who shall lay anything to the charge of the Most High's elect? Who? Who can come against you? Who can say that, oh, what are you doing is wrong? Who can? Nobody. It says here, it is the Most High that justifies. The elect were picked before the foundation of the earth. Eh? And nobody's going to pluck the elect out of the hand of the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. They are going to receive salvation. Now, I think I've made that point. Mm -hmm. Now let's read a bit of let's read this comment here. Let's continue to read. Now, where am I now? So the elect family, you can make yourself elect, right? 
So we've proven that point. I showed you in the precept in the in, in the precepts. It says, I am a Caucasian man, but I do not see. It says, I am a Caucasian man, but I do not see skin color. And I know that there is neither black nor white in heaven, nor Hispanic, nor Jew, nor Greek. Now, that Caucasian, I want to see Caucasian family again. These are all social constructs, right? Caucasian race. Let's bring it up. Let's read a bit here. The Caucasian race, also Caucasoid eh, or Europid, is an obsolete racial classification of human based on a new disproven theory of biological race. You hear that? Disproven theory of biological race. This is what Esau does. Eh? All this name that he has given himself is all what? To distract the majority, to distract people of who he is. That's why the, we are going back to what? The names of the Bible. All this race, the Ishmaelite, the Ammonite, the, the Edomite, the, 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 what is it called? Uh, uh, the Timonite, the Ishmaelite. Those names are coming back. So nobody can say, oh, I am half German and half Italian. Eh? I'm half African American and half Canadian. I'm half uh, Tongol Tongolese and uh, Togolese and half Niger, or I'm half uh, Barbadian and half Jamaican. All that nonsense is going to be is is is, 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 is going to be thrown down the uh, the garbage. Yes, this is what they do. This is all created. Eh? It says the history here. It says here. Besides, I want to go. I want to jump back. It says besides its use in anthropology and related field the term caucasian has often been used in the united states and eh, in a different social context to describe a group commonly called white people okay white also appear as a self-reporting entry in the u.s census neutralization as a united states citizen was restricted to free white person by neutralization act of 1790 and later extended to other resident populations by the Neutralization Act of 1870, Indian Citizenship Act of 1924, and Immigration and Nationality Act of 1952. The Supreme Court in the United States versus Bhagat Singh Thin decided that Asian Indians were ineligible for citizenship because though deemed Caucasian anthropologically sorry anthropologically they were not white like european descendants since most lay people did not consider them to be white people you see oh it was all social construct but i want to bring another one here what is a white uh is that what is that the one here how america our lord no that's not it that's not it one second please this is from world it said, listen to this. This is here. Is this? Yes, it's how America invented race. Okay, listen to this. So this whole thing, Caucasian, white, these are all social constructs. The first time, uh, 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 it was 1618 in Virginia, right? 1618 in Virginia. That's when the term white and black were introduced. And these are all social constructs. And Esau put himself at the, total, at, at the top of the food chain, which is okay. That's how the law designed it. Because we were supposed to be punished. He did what he had to do. He was the first to rule. He had the, 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 the blessing. He, the, the sword was his blessing and the dew of heaven. All the rich places. The Lord gave him all the resources. Right? Esau was the end of this world and the Jacob was the beginning of it that followed. Only two people that are supposed to rule. Isaac's children. Esau and Edom. Sorry, Esau and Jacob. It says the white race was invented by rich Virginians Eh? In 1676, in the aftermath of a populous rebellion of impoverished, indentured, and enslaved Africans and Europeans now known as Bacon's Rebellion. In the decades after Bacon's Rebellion, an African man and an English woman, husband and wife, sing of their fate, their future as law by law, edict by edict, their family, their marriage, their love, are made illegal how skin became color color became race and race became power as told by the president thomas jefferson 
Sally Hemmings, and one of their six children, Eston Hemmings. Hey, family, but I want to go back to here. I want, sorry, I want to, I'm going to, I want to go back to here. It doesn't make sense. It's here, here, it says here. White is a racialized classification of people generally used for those of mostly European. It's also, yeah, European ancestry. It is also skin color specified, although the definition can vary depending on context, nationality, ethnicity, point of view, appearance. Family, it doesn't really make no sense. Because we just read to you when it was first created, 1681 in Virginia. Eh? And then it, everybody adopted it. Eh? Everybody adopted it. That's what happens. That's what happens. The Lord created nations again. You know, nations. There's no end of all people. I just read it to you in the book of Ecclesiastes. Right? There's no end of all people. Everybody, all the races are still here. But the race, that particular race, Esau, Edom, eh? like it says here in the, let's go back, let's go here, let's open up, let's go to the book of Genesis. Genesis 36, is it Genesis 36? Uh, I think it's Genesis, yeah, Genesis 36. Just got to trust the spirit, Genesis 36. Yeah, you hear that? It says here, Genesis 36, we're going to pick it up from verse 8, right? Thus dwell Esau eh, in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. The Edom, let's go back. Let's look up the word Edom. The Greek word as well. Strong's H123 Edom. 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 Okay, so that's right. The so called white man, okay, Esau, Edom. Eh? Edom is what? Red, right? Because if you look at them clearly, right? If they get excited, you see that what? Their, their, their blood shows forth through their skin, right? Right? Translucent. You see their blood come for, yeah. Esau, when Esau came out, Esau came out red. Hey? Esau came out red, and here Esau eventually name was changed to Eden because of what the 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 red pottage that you know Jacob and he couldn't wait for that thing to finish cooking, but he said he wanted it. Hey? He saw his birthright to what? I mean, that's how it all. That's how it was set up in the spirit. The birthright was going to go to Jacob regardless, but that's how it was set up for for Esau to lose it. Hey? It says here, Edom is red. Edom, Edomite, Idumean. The, the Adumian is the way is the Greek pronunciation of Edom, Edomite. Okay, land of Edom, land south and southeast of Palestine. Edom is red. Eh? That's yes. There's no look. Look at the white man. Does the white man look like this screen here? Eh? But that's all social construct. You look at yourself. If you are a white man, listen to this message and eh? look at look at this screen here. Look at this this area. That is white. You don't look like that. You see. But guess what? White means what? Pure. Right? White means pure. Benevolent. Eh? Let's look it up. We're going to bring it up. I mean, let's look it up. White. Let's go to the etymology online. Etymology. White. So let's let's what's the white? It says what? Bright, radiant, clear, fair. Hey. Eh? Slang, sense of honorable, fair.
It says here, also in late old English, highly luminous color, devout, meaning white part of eyeball. Okay, now let's look at black. Hmm? We show you white is what pure, shiny, right? But now let's look at black. We gotta be fair, right? Let's look at the word black. It says here, dark. Mm -hmm. Burn to burn. Here, black was used of dark skinned people in old English of coffee with nothing added, attested by 1796. The meaning is what? Listen to this family fierce, terrible, wicked. Mm? So the self proclaimed white man. Eh? He's pure. That's right. He's pure. He's benevolent. That's right. Eh? He says here, fierce, terrible, wicked. Mm? It's from late 14th century. Figuratively, senses often come from the notion of without light. Eh? Without light. Yes. Without light, moral or spiritual. Mm? And you are the one that the Lord gives statutes and commandments to. That's right. But you are what? You are not spiritual. Eh? Eh? You have no morals. That's right. That's you. So when you're out there busy calling yourself black and white, this is what you are calling yourself. Hmm? Fierce, terrible, wicked, savages. These are, this is the name that the oppressor gave you. But anyhow, I don't know where the, why the spirit led me here, but we're going to continue to, um, to read this gentleman's uh, um, comment here. So now, Caucasian, we already told you, it's all social construct. No, the Lord didn't give anybody Caucasian. They gave themselves that name. They gave themselves the name white. It says here, and color, where was that? It says, if so, could you please explain? I am a Caucasian man, but I do not see skin color. And I know that there is neither black nor white in heaven, nor Hispanic, nor Jew, nor Greek. Because when I usually open up, I said to what? I said to what? Self. I said to what? Self-proclaim. That's right. Because that, that's exactly what it means. Self-proclaim black. Self-proclaim white. Because this is not our names. The Lord, Yahweh, what's name on? The Esau, Edom, turn everything upside down. You see? They're calling you black. They're calling you Native American, African American. Those are not your names. You see? But here he's saying that what? He knows. He says he knows. Let me read this. I don't want to add uh, anything to his comment. He said, I also may have misunderstood, but you said that hell was a construct created for what I believe you call plantation Christianity. I am in complete agreement, okay, with you when it comes to the one, it says, also, hold on, hold on. I also may have misunderstood but you said that hell was, oh, misunderstood. Yes, hell is a social construct, family. Uh, so I said social construct. Hell is one of those uh, fables created. Okay, because you have a child, let's bring out the precept. Let's bring out the precept. Hell is a condition. Man. Hell is a condition. But let's go, let's bring out the Bible here. We're going to go with, uh, uh, might as well go with Mark. Let's go to Mark first. Mark. Mark chapter 3, 9, I think. Mark 3, 9. What did the, the king said? Let's go. Let's highlight this red letter so you know who is speaking. The red letter is Yahweh Shai speaking. Mark 3, 9. What happened here? Okay, is it Mark 3, 9? Please bear with me. Of oh, Mark, Mark 9. 
sorry 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 let's go to mark 9 43 mark 9 43 it says here let's start from verse 42 it says and whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck the little ones are what he's his elect okay the little one are his elect hang about his neck and we and he were cast into the sea and if thy hand offend thee cut it off it is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell again hell into the fire that never shall be quenched now let's look up that word hell okay we're gonna bring it up mm -hmm. we have precept to you know we're gonna crush this right now there's no setting as hell you know where is that um, uh, where is it hell let's look up that word in the Greek word is what Gehenna. Strong's G Gehenna, 1067 right? Gehenna 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 okay so Gehenna here Gehenna this is let's look up the, the root word first let's look at the root the root well okay the value of Henem okay lamentation even D Daniel sorry Jeremiah spoke about this okay Jeremiah spoke about it and uh, what's uh, somebody else uh, uh, Jeremiah spoke about it and the book of Kings okay let's go let's let's bring it says Henan a valley deep and narrow ravine with steep rocky sides located southwest of Jerusalem separating Mount Zion to the north from the hill of evil council and the sloping rocky plateau of the plain of Rephaim to the south so this is the root word but let's go back again Okay, let's go back. So here, Gehenna, okay, it's, it says here, it says, hell is the place of the future punishment called Gehenna or Gehenna of fire. This was originally the valley of Hinnom, south of Jerusalem, where the filth, you hear that? The filth and the dead animals of the city were cast out and burned and fit symbol of the wicked and their future destruction. No. You know why this particular place our people were sacrificing bodies they were burning filth hey eh? they were burn, burning filth even let's go because i mentioned i must well go to jeremiah jeremiah prophesied about it jeremiah 19 okay let's open up another blue letter hell is a condition okay i always say this you see, the Lord even says in the book of it says, uh, Revelation 21, it says, hell and death were cast into the lake of fire, right? If hell is a place that you burn forever, how would the Lord cast that same place into the lake of fire, which is going to be America, right? So anyhow, let's bring this out. Let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 19. I think four it says here let's read here jeremiah 19 verse 3 and says hear ye the word of the lord yahweh speaking to israel O kings of judah and inhabitants of jerusalem that says the lord yahweh of hosts the power of israel behold i will bring evil upon this place the which Whosoever heareth, his ears shall tingle. You hear that? Because why would the Lord bring evil upon Jerusalem? The same thing that the Lord told us not to do is what? Worshipping idols, sacrificing unto all these different gods. Let's get in from Jeremiah 9, 19, 4. Because they have forsaken me and have, and have estranged this place and have burned incense into, unto other gods whom neither they nor their fathers have known nor the kings of judah and have filled this place with the blood of innocence and hey? it says here they have built also the high places of boal to burn their sons that's right that's what was happening they were burning children in some of these places 
in Hanan. That is hell. Okay? Hell simply means the grief and condition on this earth. It's not the place where you go and burn forever. No. Every, all the wicked spirit, the righteous spirit, when you die, you go back to the Lord. We're going to prove it too. And the Lord judges you. Third, fourth generation, your mother, father create a new house, which is the body. The Lord put that same spirit that he just judged and you come and save your, and then you come and, and save your time under the sun. We're going to bring the precept. But we're going to get there. It said, they have built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not, nor spoke it, neither came it into my mind. You see, this is what we did. Hmm? That is why the Lord parked you like sardines on those slave, slave ships and spread you across the four corners of the world. Because why? We love idols. But the Lord being merciful, eh? He's going to, he has a remnant, the elect that is going to redeem. And through the remnant, all Israel shall be saved. Even, even our people, our fathers, our mother, mothers that are not going to make it, they are going to be born back into the kingdom in their right mind as newborn babies. That's why right. the spirit goes back to the Lord. It's not a place where nobody's going to be burning forever. Even Judas Iscariot, the one that betrayed the Lord, he's also going to be in the kingdom. Yeah, that's right. He's also going to be in the kingdom because he's an Israelite. He says here, They have built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commended nor, not nor spoke it, neither came it into my mind. Therefore, behold, the days come, says the Lord, that this place shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom. You hear that? The son of Hinnom. Eh? Didn't we? The son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. Right? The valley of slaughter. So it is a place where our people were, were committing, committing wicked act, but the church took that and turned it into hell. That's right. That's where people are going to be burning forever. No, 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 no. No, the Lord is coming to judge this place. America is going to be the lake of fire. The land of America, nobody's going to be living on the land of America. That's right. But the, the, the earth abided forever. The earth is going to be rejuvenated. The kingdom of heaven is going to be on this planet earth. That's right. But this time, the sons of powers, the sons of God, Yasharala, they're going to be back into their original estate. Hmm? Original estate. They're going to be like gods upon this planet. Eh? Let's go back. Let's go back. They're going to be like gods upon this planet. So hell, hell, hell is just a condition. And that whole thing with where people are going to be burning forever, I will just prove it. That valley, that's where we were committing wicked acts. Again, let's go to the book of, let me bring another one. The book of Kings, Second Kings, I believe. Second Kings 20, 23. What is it? Second King. Second King 20. No, what is that happening here? Okay, let's do it this way. Second King. Second King 23. Let's pick it up from verse 9. It says here, Nevertheless, the priests of the high places came not up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem. But they eat of the unleavened bread among their brethren. And he defied Topheth, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnom, that no man might make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire to Molech. That's where our people were committing wicked acts. That's the hell. That's right. It's condition playing upon the earth. Hmm? It's not a place where people burn forever. Okay? Hell is a condition. Even let's go to the book of Jonah. Jonah 2. Is it Jonah? Where it says what? I was in the, in the, the Jonah. Jonah chapter 2. Jonah 2 verse 2. And Jonah 2 verse 2. Let's start from verse 1. 
Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his power out of his out of the fish belly, and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. Jonah was one of those prophets that disobeyed the Lord, and the Lord threw him over the over the over the ship. I think it was when the Lord sent him to Nineveh to go preach, tell Nineveh, tell that nation that the Lord was about to judge them, but he decided to do his own thing. <laughs> and then the Lord, the Lord, the Lord taught him a lesson. So he ended up in the belly's mouth. Finally, you can read that account in the book of Jonah. Okay, so here. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord Yahweh his power out of the fish belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord and he heard me out of the belly of hell. You hear that? Hell cried. Hell cried I and thou heardest my voice. Let's look up that word hell. Eh? Let's look up the word hell. Grave, you hear that? Shoel, underworld, grave, hell, pit. The grave is considered hell, okay? The underworld, show, uh, designation of the abode of the dead. The underworld, family, these are all, all fable, okay? These are all fable. Wicked sent there for punishment, righteous not abandoned to, no. Family, hell is condition play out on the earth, eh? Being in the belly of the wheel, that is hell. You are walking on this planet here with one leg. Eh? You wish you can play soccer, but you can't because you're on one leg. Eh? You are constantly in a wheelchair. Eh? You can't walk. That is hell. We, the Israelites, we are in hell because why? We are not in rulership. That's condition play out on this planet earth. Hmm? That is hell. Because at the end of the day, Esau is in his heaven. Because why? Esau is in his rulership. Okay? We are in hell. Hell is a condition play out on this planet Earth. Actually, I said it. Let's go to the book of Revelation. Since the guy wanted to know about hell. And, and he says what? He said, I also may have un misunderstood. But you said that hell was a construct created. No. I said hell is a condition. And yes, but the presentation Christianity use it eh, to put fear in people. Eh, that you're going to go to hell if you don't pay your tithes, if you don't give the right, right amount, family. But here, let's go to the book of Revelation 21. Um, is it verse 14? I think here. Revelation 21, verse 14. Is it 21? 20? Revelation? Oh, 20. Sorry, family. Revelation 20, verse 14. And death, you hear that? And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. You hear that? If hell is a place that you burn forever, how would the Lord Yahweh Shai cast it into the lake of fire? There's no such a place. Find even our the wicked of our people. The Lord is still going to have mercy on them. Nobody's going to burn forever. That lake, yes, the sacrifice in Bosa, which is going to be America, that's going to burn for a bit. But eventually that is also going to be put out. And then guess what? The animals are going to be living there. It's going to be what? A desert. America is going to be a desert. And Jeremiah 51, Isaiah 14, Isaiah 13, Ezekiel. Finally, all the prophets prophesied about America. Basra, Babylon the Great. Yes, yeah, all written. America's judgment is written all over the Bible. It says here, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Right? Let's look up the word here, hell. Let's see. Let's look up the word hell here again. Hadeus. What is the meaning? What does it say? Name Hadeus of Pluto, the god of the lower regions. Orcus. You see, you see? This is what they do. Eh? Orcus, the neither world, the realm of... They, they incorporate uh, 
uh, what is it called? Greco Roman God. Orcus is another Roman God. You know, let's, can, can, can I look this up? Look it up. Orcus is a Roman God. Yeah, look at this. Orcus was a God of the underworld, punisher of broken oath of Etruscan and Roman mythology. You see, this is the vomit. So you have to, the spirit have to be working with you eh, to be able to descend. You see, it says here, it says the underworld, the punisher of broken oath in Etruscan and Roman mythology, as with hate, the name of the God, a small letter, was also used for the underworld itself. Eventually, he was conflated with this pit. Family, this is all vomit. This is, you see, this is all vomit. Okay? This is all vomit. Hell, hell is condition played out on earth because at the end of the day, when we die, family, we're going to get into it too. We're going to get into it. Man, this, this guy has a lot of questions, but I'm doing my best to answer it as much as possible. I'm doing my best, Lord willing, family. I hope you're getting something out of this thing here. Okay, and uh, what is the other question? Let me see. Let me read on. So hell is conditioned play out on earth, okay? Hell is not a place where people burn forever. I am in complete agreement with you when it comes to the wonders being seen in the skies. But I will say that the Most High created white and black and Hispanic all alike. So we already addressed that. All alike. So why would it only be dark skin? I never said it's only going to be dark skin brothers piloting this chariot. Yeah, the chariots, that's right. They are dark skin men piloting those, uh, uh, what is it, the chariots. Okay. They're not going to be uh, dark. They're not going to be pale skin or no. They're going to be dark skin. Even what's I think in the book of Ezekiel. Is it Ezekiel 1 that tells you the description of the angel? They are dark skin. Okay. They are dark skin. They are, how was I told you? How was I gave you his description? Actually, you know what? Since I, 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 let's go back to the book of Revelation. So here, look at this. Okay, family. The book of Revelation 1. We're going to go straight to the point. The book of Revelation 1 15. Okay. The book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 15. Let's go straight to the point. It says, And his feet like unto fine brass as if they were burned in furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. So if someone's feet is, we are all in agreement that if someone's feet is like unto a fine brass as if they were burned into a furnace. So you, we are all in agreement that the rest of the body looks like that. Right? Let's bring out an image of Uh, please bear with me. Let's go to... Let's go to the image. Let's go to image. Images of burned brass. Okay? So here. This is the images of burned brass. Okay, so guess what? They are dark, right? Dark. You, we all in agreement. You see? The angel, this is what they look like. When the angel were, was sent to go visit John, hmm? the island of Patmos, when they, John was about to buy, what is it? said, like, you are my fellow brethren. The angels look like John. The angels look like you and I. They are dark skinned. Over the years, this is what we have. Give me the images of Jesus. Yes, this is what we were taught. That's right. Hmm? This is what they give us. Hey? Me, even though, even though the Bible clearly, let's go back. The Bible clearly says in the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse what? Verse 17, right? No, verse 15, it says, well, And his feet like unto fine brass, as they burnt in the furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. I want to do something else. Let's go to the book of Daniel quickly. The book of Daniel. Is it Daniel 10? Let's go. I did, it just popped in my spirit. Daniel 10, verse... Uh, yes. What does the title say? Daniel's terrified... Daniel is terrified by a vision. Let's pick it up from verse, verse 5. 
Then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of you first. His body was like the barrel and his face as the appearance of lightning and his eyes as lamps of fire and his arms and his feet like a color of polished brass and the voice of his what was what was like the voice of most let, let me repeat that again daniel 10 6 his body also was like the barrel and his face as the appearance of lightning and his eyes as the lamps of fire and his arms and his feet like in color to polish brass and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude and i daniel alone saw the vision for for men for the men that were with me saw not not the vision but a great quaking fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves that's right the father the son they look like you and i eh? it doesn't matter what anybody but over the years we eh, we love we receive we got this message where is it this image here this was what was pushed down our truth it was everywhere even up to today we walk into some of our auntie's house our mothers our grandmothers house, this big this picture is still hanging on the wall and then when you tell them the lord doesn't look like that they are ready to fight you you see that's what esau did second book of thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 says why he put himself as what the son and the father of the son he put himself as god and also the son yahweh but hashem yahweh he put himself as yahweh and he put himself as yahweh and this is what he has done over the over the years. This is what he has pushed. Eh? Meanwhile, meanwhile, this is the image. This is what it, listen. The Lord is not the author of confusion. Hmm? Eh? So anyhow, let's continue to read this comment here. My my goodness, how long have I been going for now? It's only wow, one ten already. We're gonna see. Let me see what I can I can. It says here. It says, uh, are you saying there is no real hell or a place of eternal judgment? Yes, I already did that. And torture that was prepared for the angels who rebel against the Most High. The angels didn't rebel against the Most High. Okay, the angels didn't rebel against the Most High. I respectfully ask for chapter and verse proving this. The angels didn't uh, 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 rebel against the Most High. Okay. Let me go to the book of, uh, what is it called? Is this Psalm? Uh, uh, let's go to the book of Psalm 104. Is this Psalm 104? Mm. Yeah, let's go to Psalm, Psalm 104. Is this Psalm 104? The angels they didn't rebel. The angels, everybody is in order. Let's go, let's prove this quickly. Psalm 104. Oh, is it 103? I think it's 103. Here, Psalm 103, verse 20. Here, it says here, Psalm 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, Yahweh, yea, his angels. You hear that? Yea, his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. The angels are in perfect order. 
Okay? It says, Bless ye the Lord, all ye hosts, and the armies of heaven, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. The angels are in a perfect order. Nobody's, nobody got kicked out. Family, those are all fables. Hey? Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And Psalm 103. Hmm? Psalm 103, verse 20. Again, it says here, Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of the word. The voice of the word, family. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, and the angels in heaven, Michael and the rest of them, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. I want to go, let me add, let me just give him one more precept. Let's go to Psalm 148. Yes, family, we have receipt. He wants receipt, we're going to give him receipt. Psalm 148, verse 2. I know this not, uh, Psalm 1, his family is all part of, you know, teaching, you know. We got to prophesy. They want answers, we're going to give them the answers. You know, it says here, Psalm, Psalm, 10, Psalm 148, verse 2, straight to the point. Praise ye him. It said, praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. Praise ye him, sun and the moon. Praise, praise him, all ye stars of the light. Everything is in perfect order. Okay? That thing here, I think it's Isaiah. He's probably referring to Isaiah 14. I think it's Isaiah 14. Lucifer fell. I said Isaiah 14. Let's bring it out. I think that's what he's probably referering to that. He said, oh, Lucifer, how, how thou fallen. Lucifer simply means the light bearer. Who's, who's the light bearer right now? The Illuminati, the ones ruling, the elite of this society, the ones making the law, the statute, the one making, sorry, not the law, laws and statutes and commandments. No, the ones ruling the world. Esau, Edom, eh? He's the elite of his society, the rough child, eh? The uh, the Dupont, eh? Those international bankers, the one at uh, World Economic Forum. That's all your elite. They are the light bearers, eh? On the left hand side, the true light bearer is coming. Yahweh Shai. It says, Oh, thou Lucifer, how thou fallen. Oh, here. Yeah. So this is what the plantation Christianity will use. It says here, How are thou fallen from heaven? Your heaven is what? Your rulership. And eh? you are in your heaven. It's oh Lucifer. Lucifer simply means a light bearer. Let's bring it up. Oh, thou fallen. Eh? It's just meaning coming down from your rulership. That's all that means, family. Let's look up the heaven. Invisible heaven, sky as a board of the stars, as the visible universe, the sky, atmosphere, heavens. Yes, Esau is ruling right now. He is in the lofty position. And eh? this is his heaven. Eh? And he's about to go to the bottom because Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow. When Jacob goes back into rulership, they are in their heaven. Eh? I hope it's making sense. When Jacob, Esau is in his heaven right now. Eh? But I want to look up the word Lucifer. Lucifer. In the Hebrew, it's high. Strong's H, 1966. Haleo. Haleo, that's right. Haleo. Haleo, okay. Lucifer means a light bearer. They are the so-called the Illuminati, the ones that know that you are an Israelite, the one that they're trying to hide your identity, yes. But the average Joe, the average Edomite doesn't know any better. But the elite of this society, they know who you are. Lucifer simply means the light bearer, shining one, morning star, eh? of the king of Babylon and Satan. Eh? That's right, because Esau is working directly with Satan, because they are the one family ruling right now. This, remember the, the Job 9.24? It says the earth was given into the hand of the wicked, right? The wicked are bearing rule right now. You see, the wicked are bearing rule right now. That's why the Lord says here in Malachi, okay? Let's go to Malachi. Actually, let's go here. Malachi 1.4. Let's go to the book of, I want a quick navigation. So yes, so Lucifer is just a light bearer. 
family. It's just a light bearer. It's not an angel falling out of the sky. He was the leader of the choir and he upset the Lord and yet the Lord kicked him out. No, 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 no. Family, those are all fable. All fable. Okay? All the angels are in perfect order. Look at Job. Actually, let me bring it. I think I quoted it. I must well bring it. Job 2. Is it Job 2, 5? It says here, Job chapter 2, verse 1, okay? Again, there was a day when the sons of the Most High, you hear that the sons, listen to this, the sons of the Most High came to present themselves before the Lord Yahweh. And Satan, who? Satan, who? Satan, who's that? The sons of God. The Most Satan is one of the sons of the Most High on the left-hand side. Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord Yahweh and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Yeah, Satan, the representative are the Edomite. That's right. It goes here. Let me bring it out here again. They are seeds. Satan is controlling the left hand side. Remember the earth. The current planet right now that we are living on, the one ruling right now, is given into the hand of the wicked. That's why the earth is in the state that is in today. Let's hear what the Lord said. Family, everything that we are saying, we have received. Okay? This, these are not my word. Malachi 1.4. Listen to what the Lord said. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, says the Lord. Yet you say, wherein has thou loved us? This is what the Lord is saying to Israel, right? The Lord is saying he loves Israel, but Israel, yeah, Israelites are complaining that the Lord doesn't love them. If the Lord loves them, how come we are in the fifth or sixth uh, captivity right now? But hear what the Lord is saying. I have loved you, says the Lord Yahweh. Yet ye say, wherein has thou loved us? Now listen to the Lord's response. Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, says the Lord, yet I love Jacob and I hated Esau? You hear that? I hated Esau, you see, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Family, it's not anything. Esau didn't do anything for the Lord to hate him. The Lord created Esau just to destroy him. That's right. That's it. Let's go to the book of, excuse me, let's go to the book of um, Romans chapter 9. Romans 9. Romans 9. This is the Lord's movie. This is the Lord's doing all his pleasure. We have no control over this movie. Everybody is playing their part. He? It says here. Let me pick it up from verse 8. Verse 6. Romans chapter 9 verse 6. Okay? I love the way Apostle Paul broke this thing down. It says here. Not as though the word of the Most High have taken none effect. For they are not all Israel which are of Israel. You hear that? Not all Israel. Even the, among Israel, there are an elect. You see? Eh? It said, neither because they are the seed of Abraham. You hear that? Singular, right? The seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. The blessing. It went from Abraham unto who? Isaac. Okay, this is very simple. Eh? It says here, um, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of the Most High. We know that Abraham had what? Seven other, 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 other sons, right? Ishmael is one of them. But the blessing didn't go to them. He said, these are not the children of the Most High, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. You hear that? For this is the word of the promise. At this time will I come and Sarah, who is Sarah? Sarah is Abraham's wife, shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah, who's who? Isaac's wife, and also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. For the children, here is the point, but for the children being not yet born, Isaac haven't even met uh, Rebekah yet, neither having done any good or evil. You hear that? The children, they haven't neither done any good or evil, that the purpose of the Most High, according to an election, to, according to election, my stand, not of works, but of him that calleth it. You see that? Esau, Edom, 
is wicked because the Lord made him wicked. The same one that Obadiah chapter 1 verse 18. The same one the Lord is going to destroy. This is the Lord's movie. We have nothing to do with this. That's why you have to remove your feeling out of it. Once you, the Lord open your eyes to see what is happening, this is the Lord's pleasure. This is his pleasure. We just happen to be on the right side. Lord willing, we endure to the end. Hmm? So again, let me see if I can uh, read a bit of here. It says, question number two. You, you said something about people being reborn as newborn children, also sounding as though every lost soul is destined for reincarnation. Yes, because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we all have to appear as what? Uh, um, please bear with me. Um, please bear with me. Let's do this. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Let me see here. Let's see if I can answer some of this. Let me, it says, are you saying there is no real hell? I already did that. I answered that. Question number two. You said something about people being reborn as newborn children. That's why, yeah, Apostle Paul says, yeah, uh, I'm going to just quote it. Uh, Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Actually, let me, let me bring it up. Let me bring it up. Acts chapter chapter, I said chapter 3, right? Verse 19, I believe. Is it Acts chapter 3, verse 19? And the only people that can repent are Israelite. Hmm? They are the only people that can repent. If you're not, if you're not an Israelite, eh, you're not going to, it doesn't matter. Salvation is only for Israel. The only people, the law, statutes, and commandments were given to Israelite. We are the only people that can sin. That's right. What is sin? Sin is transgression of the law. The laws were given to what? The Israelite, right? So here, so Acts chapter 3, three verse 19, repent ye therefore and be converted. When being converted is what? Meaning what? Changes, right? Let's look up the word converted. The word converted means what? Transitively to tend to, right? So you you to tend to the Lord. What, what did that mean? You live in the wicked lifestyle that you were living. That's right. You repenting. The, whatever you were involved in, you leaving it behind, right? To the worship of the true power, to cause, to return, to bring back, to the love and obedience of the Mosai, to the love of the children, to love wisdom and righteousness, to tend to oneself, to turn. That's right. So to convert, to turn back, right? Let's go back. Okay. So now, again, it says here, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come. The time is what? The end, right? Of salvation. Okay. When the, the Lord appears, okay, times of refreshing shall come from the presence of our King, Yahweh Shai. You hear that? So here, let me see if I can... So yes, and then he says he says something else. I think he asked. He says second. Where is that? Uh, um, oh, so question two: something about people being reborn as newborn children. That's right. Almost sounding as though every lost soul is destined for reincarnation. I don't know what he means by that. But at the end of the day, we all have to appear at the judgment seat. Okay? When we die, you see, let's go to the book of uh, Ecclesiastes. Uh, is it Ecclesiastes 12? Let me get Let me see. It says what? Uh, we all have to appear at the judgment seat. But I want to go to Ecclesiastes Ecclesiastes 12.7. I was right. Ecclesiastes 12.7. 
let's do this ecclesiastes verse 12 so chapter 12 verse 7 it says here then shall the dust return to the earth as it was and the spirit shall return unto the most High who gave it so the spirit once we die the body goes back to the ground the spirit goes back to the lord let's go to second corinthians mm-hmm. let's go to second the book of second corinthians is it second corinthians where we all have to appear at the judgment seat i think is this second corinthians let's go to second corinthians i think uh no let's do this the book of second corinthians chapter 5 let's go here 10 11 okay so here for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Jehovah Shai. So once the body goes and the spirit goes back to the Lord, what happens? That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. You see, that's why I said, knowing the terror, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Why is that? Because once you go to the judgment seat and they give you your judgment, the Lord holds you there to third or fourth generation, like he said. But I'm just skipping here. Let, let's, let's slow it down. So here, the body goes back to the Lord. You are judged. And then here, it says in the book of Ecclesiastes. Hmm? Is it Ecclesiastes 3? I think it's the book of Ecclesiastes 3. Let's bring this out. Ecclesiastes 3, 16, I believe. Uh, where is it? The book of... Is it Ecclesiastes uh, yeah, it is Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 3, 16, I believe. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 3, 16. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, right? The place of judgment, that wickedness was there and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. So the place of judgment is under the sun, which is what? The planet. So the Lord holds you, the Lord judges you. You are in the spirit world. Eh? And then you come back. Okay, but here, let's go to even Ezra. Ezra did, um, uh, Ezra said it in the book of 2nd Ezra. Let's bring out, let's go to the book of 2nd uh, Ezra, Apocrypha. I hope, uh, I hope, I hope, <laughs> I hope uh, you are learning something. I know this is a bit all over the place. But I want to answer this gentleman's question as much as I can. Uh, Second Ezra chapter uh, chapter is it fourteen? And let's go fourteen. Fourteen Second Ezra 13, verse 34. That's where it said, therefore, no, no, let's say so. No, it says here, straight to the point. Second Ezra chapter, chapter 14, verse 35. For after death shall the judgment come. Remember, we just went to Second Corinthians, right? And then we prove it that what we all have to appear at the judgment seat, right? And the judgment come when we shall live again. Why are we going to live again? Because that spirit, the same spirit, after you receive your judgment, it's going to come into a different vessel. That's right. Your mother and father will create, you know, will get together, get busy, and then the Lord will put that spirit into that body, that vessel that your mother and father is going to create. It's that simple. It's called reincarnation. We've been here many, many, many times over, over and over. You hear that? It says, after death, for after death shall the judgment come, which is going to be served on what? On this planet here. Nobody's going somewhere and bend forever. Your, ju- your judgment could be that maybe on your 12th birthday, eh, you get smoked by a car. That's your judgment. Or maybe the moment you came out of your mother's womb, you are wheelchair bound forever. That's right. That could be your judgment. Your judgment could be that you are just playing soccer, boom, you get a heart attack. That is your judgment. But it's served on this planet here. 
And then the same thing, it repeats itself again. The spirit goes back to the Lord. He holds on to it, and then every third, fourth generation will come back. He says here, when we shall live again, and then shall the names of the righteous be manifest, and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. Because it's going to be what? Declared on this planet. You're going to see the righteous. You're going to see them living a righteous life. You're going to see the wicked doing the same thing, and then they're going to end up dying again. Yeah, so we do live again. So I hope I answer his questions. Yeah, the family, there's reincarnation everywhere in the Bible. Even how much I said it, they asked him. I think they asked the apostles, uh, "Who do they say that I am?" I mean, you no, know, actually, he said it in the book of is it Matthew, where he said, uh, "If you can receive it, this is Elijah or Elisha." Is that, is that what he said? Uh, let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find it. Yes, Matthew eleven fourteen. Let's go. Matthew eleven fourteen. Let's bring it out quickly. Matthew eleven. Matthew eleven fourteen. It says here, for all the prophets and the law prophesied unto John, and if ye will receive it, this is Eli Elias, meaning Elijah which was for to come. He that have ear to hear, let him hear. The spirit of John. You see that? Actually, let's go back. Let's go back so you get the full content. It says here, For this is he of whom it was written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist unto now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, referring to the Israelite, and the violence taking it by force. For all the prophets and the law, sorry, for all the prophets and the law prophesied unto John. And if ye will receive it, remember he, he that have ear, let him hear. If ye will receive it, John the Baptist was Elijah coming back. You see, that spirit, Elijah spirit was put in John. But John, they gave him the name John. But the same spirit that was in Elijah came into John. That was Elijah. Family. The Yahweh is telling you there. The red letter, that's the Lord Yahweh is speaking. Yes. Reincarnation happens all the time. Let me see, family. I know I've been going for a bit now. Let me see if I can. Yes, reincarnation is all over the Bible. What's it called? Uh, Solomon was Yahweh Shai. You see? Solomon was Yahweh Shai. Isaac, Isaac was Yahweh Shai. You know? But anyhow, let's get a. Let's. Uh... It says here. Um... I think I answered that, right? Question, it's, it's a question three. If the Most High is no respect of person and unequally weights and measure is an abomination in his eyes, then why do you say the so-called white man is to blame for God's people being dispossessed of their land? I'm very confused considering there were many Greeks who came to faith and Romans. Finally, at the end of it all, it is the Lord that gave us into their hands, okay? And the Greek, the Romans, yes, family, the Christianity, eh? That was created during the Byzantine Empire, Constant, uh, Constantine time. Yes, family, Constantine, he wasn't he himself, family, he was a pagan. That move that he made, eh? 
Christianity was a, was a political reason. Eh? Because once the Western Roman Empire fell, that's what ended up happening. He created this, uh, he, this religious movement for what? Yeah, it's the same thing, to, pro, uh, to promote himself. That universal, universal salvation never existed. Salvation is only for the Israelite, and we've been proving it many, many times, times and times over. Okay, it says here, European with light skin, who from scriptures are absolutely undeniably born again. All that born again stuff doesn't work. Family born again is only the only people that can repent are the Israelite, the twelfth tribe of Jacob. They are the only people because those are the ones that the laws and statutes were given to. I just proved it. And the elect were picked before the foundation of the earth. Eh? But the elect will be activated. They will be activated in these last days. Hmm? But they are going to be Israelite. The rest of the nation have nothing to do with salvation. It said, these things so I can continue to support you spreading the glorious gospel of the Lord Yeshua and have some understanding as to why the children of Esau are broadly labeled as white men or if they are saying no white men can be saved. Could you elaborate and explain how you came to believe that through chapter and verses? This may not be the case, but in your video, it has come across that way. I would love to speak to you more on this and look forward to hearing your reply. I fear that many of the elect, eh, those saved by faith in Yeshua, may hear your video and start to doubt their salvation or to misunderstand. No, no, the elect are going to dance to this song. Oh yeah, whether they look black, whether they look white, whether they look... No, because I always go back into my lessons and, 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 and watch my lessons. I always say, listen, some of the elect are going to look like this nation. They're going to look like your typical white man, your typical Indian, your typical so-called Indian white, or your typical Chinese man. I always say that. Okay? So anyway, it says, those saved by faith in Yeshua may hear your video and start to doubt their salvation or to understand the heart of your creator to their own discouragement and possible destruction. Thank you. But at the end of the day, no, the Lord says what? No, nobody. The elect, oh, the elect are going to be delivered. Oh, yeah. These are not my word. The elect will be saved. He says, it's going to save them out of all these nations. There's not going to be one grain left. Hey? Hey, I will save them. What, what is it? it says here? I will save them. Is it? No. Please bear with me. The elect will be safe. And we're going to wrap it up. I think I've answered this gentleman's question to the best of my ability through the spirit of Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Bahashem Kakudash. Let's go to the book of Amos. Let's go to the book of Amos. Amos 9. Amos 9, 9. It says here, The elect, wherever they are, if they are among these nations, speaking different tongue, meaning different language, they're going to be redeemed. It said, Behold, the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. That's America. Saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, says the Lord. For lo, I will command and I will save the house of Israel among the nations like as corn is sifted in a sieve, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. And here, Yahweh Shai himself said it. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Matthew 24, nobody, the elect, the elect going to receive this message. The elect are going to dance to this. They're not going to be discouraged. They're going to say, well, you know, I believe they're going, the elect are going to, you see, the, the Lord, the Lord is amazing. 
The Lord is just simply amazing. You know, he's the one that's doing the sealing. He's going to seal his, the elect that were picked before the foundation of the earth. Whether they look like, uh, what is it called? Uh, your typical, uh, I said, white, uh, what, Indian, Pakistani, Vietnamese, they are going to be redeemed. That's right. They are going to be redeemed. They are Israelite. They are going to be redeemed. Okay. Matthew 24. Let's go to verse, verse 29. Hear what the king said. It says verse 29. Immediately. Matthew 24 verse 20. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven eh? and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. This is the kingdom of this world. They are, they are going to lose their mind when the king shows up. Verse 30 says here, and then shall appear the sign of the son of man. You hear that? Yahweh Shai is, com is coming with the angel. It says here, and then immediately after the tribulation with the earthquake, the chaos that's about to take place. And then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the son of the man, of man coming. Who is that? Yahweh Shai. In the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He coming with thousands and thousands of angels. The so-called UFOs. Eh? They are the chariot of Israel. Verse 31. And he, listen to the who is he? Yahweh Shai. Shall send his angels with a great sound of trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect. Yeda, the one that will pick before the foundation of the earth. Barakata Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. Ba'ashem Rukakudash. It says here. And he shall send his angels with great sound of of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other you hear that wherever they are whether they are in maui whether they are in niger whether they are in ghana whether they are in california america whether they are in Nigeria, what is it called jamaica it doesn't matter where they are under the sun. The Lord, the angel, is going to get them. That's right. They're going to be beamed up into the chariot. The Lord, the elect, that's right. Every single one of them are going to be delivered. That's why they are called the elect. That's right. So, I will leave it there. I hope I answered the gentleman's uh, question. Hmm? Yes. So, I never said that everybody, yes, it's going to look like uh, what's a Wesley snipe? No, I said yes. Majority of uh, I says most of most of most uh, I says I said most, some of our people are among these nations, and they're going to look like the nations. Remember, Jacob seed is in all these waters, right? So yes, I showed the example with uh, Blake Griffin, the basketball player. You saw the the color of his father. And his wife and the children, that boy now, his son, Blake Griffin's son, now go and marry another Edomite. Eh? That's it. That so-called uh, black color, that dark skin is gone. But guess what? The spirit in that child is what? It's an Edomite. Sorry, I said it's, 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 it's a Jake. It's an Israelite. You see? But anyhow, I will leave it there. All praises, honor, and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukakudash. And yes, family, I will leave it there. I've been going for a bit now. Shalom.